Hey, it's Eli aka Atlas. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on drawing wrinkles, wrinkles for clothes, cloths, fabrics, and this was actually requested by one of my subscribers by the name of Zadiel Vasquez. The first thing we need to know about drawing wrinkles is they're extremely easy to do. The first thing you have to determine is what kind of fabric you're rendering. This is the most important thing because no two types of fabric fold the same way. And by that I mean leather bunches up while cotton wrinkles across. I might make another tutorial on how to render these fabrics like this sometime in the future. I was trying to come up with a way to describe the idea behind drawing wrinkles in a few steps like I always do for my videos. Then I realized I could describe it in two words, tension and gravity. Tension affects how many wrinkles, if any, appear on a subject, while gravity determines the direction those wrinkles move to. For example, if we wanted to put wrinkles on an otherwise flat cloth, if we pick a cloth up at its ends, it hangs downwards like a stage curtain by default, as you can see on the diagram. Gravity is pushing the cloth downwards, and the fabric of it, it's a lighter fabric, like a cotton or something and the way we're holding it from its ends makes it fold a bit in a U-shape. Now, depending on where we pull the cloth and how hard, it straightens up and the wrinkles lessen as it tightens. This is tension. And then you pull it to its maximum tightness. As you can see, there are no wrinkles, except where it's being held. Now the cloth is being held upwards and it is stretching across. So you can see how tension and gravity affect clothes, fabrics, materials like that. And the same rules apply to clothing as well. Let's take our first subject. It's wearing a leathery type of hoodie. And I found an outfit like this online, which I used as a reference. You can see how tension and gravity affects this as well. His hands are in his pocket like this, our model. And the weight of his hands is pulling the upper part of his jacket downwards. So that's tension and gravity. So you can see all the lines on the body of the jacket are being tugged downwards like so. And you can see that on the way the wrinkles are drawn as well. At the same time, on the sleeve area, there is no tension and only gravity. And that makes the leftover material that's hanging on his arms, those just bunch together and wrinkle up like this. And since it's leather, leather wrinkles a little bit differently than cotton or polyester or satin all that type of stuff. So you can see the way the light hits it and I'll probably do another tutorial on that like I said. Gravity affects this by just leaving whatever material is left there to do its own thing and left to its own devices. It all just accumulates in one area. Now another example here of tension and gravity is this as opposed to the thick wrinkles that leather usually has. This is a cotton type of shirt. And as you can see, it wrinkles a lot more differently. I rendered it differently. It's a lighter colored shirt. Maybe blue, maybe white. It really doesn't matter. But for this, the tension is spread across the sh chest and shoulders, as you can see. So under the arms, there are wrinkles because the material is hanging, but there aren't any wrinkles across the chest. And that is because the shoulders right here are carrying the weight and carrying the bulk and the majority of the fabric that's hanging from downwards over your head. When you put on a shirt, the material hangs and what catches it is the chest and the shoulders. So there aren't too many wrinkles there because of tension. The tension is spread across again. And that changes once we get down to the arms. This is a skinnier body type. So there's extra space inside of the sleeves because he's not really filling it up 
like uh, the guy on our next example will, you can see that because there's gravity and no tension, the material just hangs off of the arm. And then it wrinkles because when there's no tension, you get wrinkles. It is as simple as that. And the leftover material that isn't being stretched out from the shoulders and the chest accumulates right at the bottom of the shirt. And you can see it on your own clothes that you wear in real life if you take the time to study them a little bit. This guy has his hand in his pocket, which is the pocket of his pants, as opposed to the first model who had his hands in his jacket pocket. So his arm is pushing up the wrinkles upwards, and that's gravity, but again no tension, like on the sleeve upwards. Gravity is making the wrinkles of the shirt fall downwards, his hand is pushing it up, but there's still no tension because the material is free to go wherever it wants to, so it just accumulates in the space between his arm and the end of it. So cotton has smaller wrinkles like this, like these, as opposed to leather which has thicker wrinkles. It, the light reflects off of it differently as well. Again, future tutorial. And here is an example of only tension and no gravity. And the reason for that is it's a spandexy material this character is wearing and he's a bit on the bulkier side. He's a little more muscular, a little stockier. So his shirt is going to stretch a little bit differently than the other two. This is only tension and no gravity. Well, I mean, there's gravity. Gravity is always present. Gravity is always a factor. But the tension, sometimes tension is a heavier factor than gravity. And tension overrides gravity. I think we could call it that in this case. Um, laws of physics, we can forget about all that for the time being for this lesson. The wrinkles form under and at the point of tension. As you can see here, like on the previous model, the tension is spread across the shoulders and chest from the top, and that makes wrinkles appear on his underarms, the armpit, and right under the shoulders, which poke out the most at the top. And as it goes down, it continues. You see him catch some wrinkles right between the crease of the arms, or the elbows rather. And the bicep and the tricep poke out, so there's no wrinkles there. They just drop the wrinkles below and above where the tension is located. And at his wrist, where his arms would come out from the sleeve, more wrinkles as well. The wrinkles cling across the body, so those just place little lines right across the ab area. And that are our three basic types of wrinkles that you should probably memorize. Now we're going to draw a series of wrinkles in real time here for a different fabric. And this time the subject is going to be female. So we can demonstrate a little more on that as well. As I draw this, notice where I'm placing the little bumps, the speed bumps, the wrinkles on the character. The fabric is a little bit tighter. It isn't spandex, instead it's going to be a PVC or latex type of fabric. The wrinkles are accumulating at the under the points of tension as we learned on the example above. So the bicep and the tricep are absorbing, are creating most of the tension and the wrinkles are appearing in the crease of the elbow and beneath the shoulder. And since she's leaning a bit, wrinkles are going to appear right on her side as the hip juts out and as the hip juts out that creates tension and you can see all of these things in real life around you 
if you pay attention to things like that, which I definitely recommend you do, always study from life. The light source, by the way, is going to be coming from the top corner. In my tutorial I did about drawing human hands, which I'll link somewhere around the video, I uh, go into a little bit of detail about light sources. I'll do another video entirely dedicated to that as well sometime in the future. But uh, just watch and if you can follow, because the light is hitting some parts, the PVC reacts to that. And so I call them cuts up here inside of the shadows and the shading. And those are just white lines for where the wrinkles are splashing across. Okay. So this is a PVC latex type of fabric. Now let's examine how this wrinkles the way it does. As you can see, it's fairly tight, but it still has some places of tension, some places where gravity takes hold and it wrinkles a bit. For here, tension and gravity affects the arm that's bending here, hit the hand on the hip. It's going diagonally. This is tension plus gravity. And this makes wrinkles appear right there on the inside of the arms and under the armpit, as well as inside the crease of the elbow. And this is stuff we learned on the first three models above. More wrinkles here. Wrinkles right here, the hip, the wrinkles appear wherever, under wherever there's tension, or above wherever there's tension. So this tutorial might get a bit repetitive because that is really the main lesson, tension and gravity. Once you know about those two things and can study those, you'll know how to draw wrinkles very easily. Let's move on to another part of this topic that is equally as important. And that is fabric and motion. When drawing clothes, whether static or in motion, it's always important to consider the form beneath it. So, for example, let's do something like this.